Good morning, I'm Neva Reddy Manu, and this is your morning news fix for Thursday, 23rd of November. In this update, Christopher Luxon says he and his coalition partners are still a few issues away from forming a government. He and David Seymour have returned to Wellington, with Winston Peters expected there today. Policy programmes and most ministerial positions have been agreed, but the role of Deputy Prime Minister is yet to be decided. The only development yesterday in that space was Nicola Willis making it clear she doesn't want it. Luxon says he'll move with speed once an agreement's reached. And so it'll take as long as it takes, unfortunately, and I know, um, but we're so close, we've come so, so far, uh, and we need to close it out quickly and then get, get to work. Seven electorate offices in Auckland have been targeted with pro-Palestine vandalism. Red paint, meant to symbolise blood, has been thrown at the premises of Nationals Chris Luxon, Judith Collins, Paul Goldsmith, Melissa Lee, Dan Bidwar and Simon Watts. David Seymour's Epsom office was also targeted. Auckland's MFAT and US Consulate buildings and Wellington's Premier House were targeted by a similar protest last week. Israel's cabinet has approved a deal to release the hostages taken by Hamas on October 7. At least 50 women and children will be released in exchange for a four-day truce. Israel will release 150 Palestinian prisoners. It's already released a list of 300 that could be part of a wider agreement to release all hostages held in Gaza. CNN's Becky Anderson says it's now an agonising wait for hostage families. Because the names and the identities, the nationalities of these individuals haven't yet been released. The idea is that that list is provided every day. A teenage boy in custody at an Auckland youth justice facility risks losing his sight after being attacked with a mixture of hot water and sugar. Oranga Tamariki has confirmed one young person has been arrested and charged following the incident at Korowai Manaki in Wedi on Sunday. The victim, who was on remand, was taken to hospital and Open Justice understands he suffered serious facial injuries. The mixture of hot water and sugar is known commonly as prison napalm and sticks to the skin, which can cause deep and traumatic burns. An investigation is underway. More squeeze on tenants as rents around the country surge by an average of 6%. The latest core logic housing stats show rental growths running at historically high levels, rising 6.1% in the year to October. It's roughly double the average growth rate over that same period of 3.2%. Chief Property Economist Calvin Davidson says high levels of migration is one of the main drivers. Wages have risen. Supply side of the market's perhaps a little bit tight. The investors haven't been able to add to that stock of rental properties as much as they otherwise might have done. But I think probably you'd look at it and say it is a demand-driven rise in rents. In sport, the cancellation of Auckland's Sail GP event in March has been met with dismay from the local yachting community. AUT sailing professor Mark Orams says the decision compounds the loss of the America's Cup. Rower Kerry Williams Knee Gowler is eyeing a spot in the Coxless Four at the Paris Olympics. The gold and silver medalist from the Tokyo Games will work with the wider national squad over summer. LeBron James has become the first NBA basketballer to pass 39,000 regular season career points in the first quarter of the Lakers' win over the Jazz. I'm Neva Reddy Manu. That's the latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.